we are uh, teaching uh, this class called nanotechnology characterization. So we are introduced uh, the tool and the basic uh, fundamental physics principle uh, of how that that will use uh, be used in characterizing nanostructure, uh, nanometer structure uh, on the surface or uh, in for for many industrial or, or in the academic field. So we talked about scanning chrome microscopy before and we talked about scanning tunnel microscopy and today I would like to introduce uh, another one. Atomic force microscopy is well known as AFM or many people call it AFM. So we talked about scanning tunnel microscopy and this is a uh, very nice equipment and the it was invented in 1981, and the uh, inventor Binny and Roro uh, won the Nobel Prize due to this work, scanning tunnel. So, in 1950, we can pretty much see the, uh, by the tra transmission electron microscopy, we can pretty much see the atom, but in the lattice, in the box structure. But how beautiful this equipment is, is that you can see the individual atoms on the surface. So, so that's a very powerful tool. And the way it works is it approaches a metallic tip on a metallic sample. Okay, it's not, it's very approaching, it's close enough, but it's not in contact. So it's uh, separated apart like a few angstrom. And as it is as close as, as few angstrom, there's a curve uh, electron will tunnel through the tip to the sample or from the sample to the tip. Okay, so this is the uh, is beneficial from the quantum mechanics. There is a tunneling probability. It is prohibited in the classical mechanics, but it it is possible in the quantum mechanics. So basically, we collect. So this tool is collect the tunneling current uh, during the scanning of the surface. So this is the first work is a tip scanning on the gold 101 surface, and here's the later work. We can see the atomic resolution. Here's the steps, and here's the individual atom, and this is the individual frequency. Okay, so the atomic current is extremely sensitive as the distance separation between the tip and the sample, so it's uh, exponentially decay as the distance. So, so that's why they have a very high resolution of lateral resolution and also in the Z high resolution. But there are some limitations of this kind of work. Do, does uh, anybody know what kind of limitation this, this scanning tunnel microscopy has? <coughs> okay, so basically, if, if you scan scan on the surface, you have you need to have electron tunneling through it. Okay, so basically, you should the limitation is you can only scan on conducting substrate, so you can only scan on metal or the semiconductor. So how about a lot of things are, are insulator on non-conducting, then how could we deal with that? So there, this is one very important limitation uh, of this, this very powerful tool. The other limitation is after that, people start to know, oh, we are, we are collecting the, the, the electron. We are collecting the tunneling current. We are not collecting, we are not measuring the topography of the height. Okay, some of the materials are very sensitive are easy to tunnel through it. So you, you can get at some, 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 some atom in some kind of material. You can have large, large tunneling current. But it, when you scan to the other material, you, you get lower tunneling current. So, so remember, the STM only tells you, the, the signal you only get in STM is only tunneling current. It's the current. So, when you scan on different species, it gives you a different uh, magnitude of tunneling current. The STM profile will show you a, 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 a up and down, a, a high, a look like corrugation, but it is not, not really corrugation. But it is really measured, it's a local density of state. It's not topography. It strongly depends mm -hmm. on the electron property. It strongly depends on uh, different species. So, People start kind of not, not really trust of this, this kind of machine. Uh, so that comes to, to the invention of the AFM. 
the same people who won the Nobel Prize know the limitation of the STM. So in 1986, he invented the, the, the one of them invented the FN atomic force microscopy. Well, basically the idea is, is similar. Here's the sample, and here's the tip. Okay, so so so. Previously, I said, oh, they are not really in touch for the STM, tunnel uh, microscopy. They are have uh, separated few ions from and uh, collected tunnel current. But AFN is not in true. For AFN, is nominally contact the surface. Okay, so it measures the surface profile. Okay, so the big thing here is that the first image is scanned on the aluminum oxide, which is insulator. So it breaks through the limitation of the STM. Okay, so this is atomic force microscopy. Then, what do what, what we mean about atomic force? What is we are what, what forces we are measuring? So, so here is the plus showing the energy versus the separation between two atoms. Okay, for example, there are two atoms, or you can think about two molecules. Okay, here's the nuclei. Here's the electron cloud out of it. It's separating the uh, Special uh, distance about uh, R. We have very special distance. Okay, so if this is the potential, this is the energy. How we get a force? We how we get a force? We can easily get a force by the first derivative of, of the energy. So I hope every every one of you, if, if you don't know. Anything today, you can you need to remember this this equation. Okay, <coughs> the force is a vector equal the minus special derivative of the energy. This is a universal uh, equation. It's all true for all conservative force. It's also true for for this kind of atomic force. It's true for van der Waals force. I'm talking about. It's true for gravity. It's true true for for all all the conservative force. So, so if we take the first special derivative of, of the energy, you give me the force. Okay, so at the equilibrium distance, R, corresponding to, there's no force, right? So that will come to the equilibrium. When we, so when the separation between two atoms becomes very, very small, we see a strong repulsive interaction, repulsive force. So some FM scanning mole are contacting this Repulsion force. This repulsion force comes from the Pauli exclusion principle. So the, the electron cloud overlap, they don't want to. The Pauli exclusion principle says every atom can only, uh, one electronic state can only locate one electron. So they are, they, they are, when they are very, very close, they are, have very strong repulsive force. But when the distance are moving forward, moving Away from each other, there's an attractive force, and this is basically the van der Waal force. And so some FS animals are measuring the attractive force, the van der Waal force. So these two kind of force are very sensitive to the spatial distance, but it's not sensitive to, to what kind of material. So both con conducting material and both the non-conducting material have pre uh, present of these two forces. So that's the that's why. Everything could work on the conducting surface material and non-conducting materials. It's only depend on the distance between the, the atoms. Okay, so here I show you some. Okay, if it is very very <laughs> depend uh, depend on the distance of, of the atoms. So if we got very large nuclei and very small atoms, and and these are probably different as this are. So if, if, if this is important, I mean the, the nuclei vari variation of the size of nuclei change a lot, then, then for different species, the atomic force will change a lot. But this is not true of this data to show you. For ion, okay, the radii is about one angstrom change to about two angstrom. Okay, but for molecules or atoms, it's also from variation from one angstrom to two angstrom. For another non spherical molecule, like or even polar molecule, the variation of uh, nuclei is also one electron to two electron. So it's not sensitive like that. It's, it's not sensitive for, for the 
the separation uh, of the nuclei. So that is also why the FN atomic force microscopy is not sensitive to the to the uh, species uh, uh, of the materials. So basically, the measure uh, is, is the topography of the surface. It's not the electron property or electronic property or chemical property of the surfaces. Okay, so basically this is how the AFN works. Okay, so let's start from this. This is a sample <coughs> with many corrugations on it, and this is scanner. Okay, how sample are move, move. Okay, so here's a chip. Once I have the chip, there's a long, long, long cantilever. Is it can vibrate, it can uh, uh, def have deflection on the surface, and we shine a laser on the back side of the cantilever, and reflect it to a photodiode. It's a sensor. Okay, positioning a sensor. Okay, so and the tip is in another side, which is toward the sample. So when we one one scanning mode is that when we scanning on the surface there are corrugations so we are deflection up and down for for the cantilever when we have the the laser light come from the same direction but the reflection are are, are changing are, are are changing angle so we can track this angle how we change the angle we can track okay how the surface come down up and down. So this is the basic idea of how AFM work. So this reflection light signal is very important of the scanning. Okay, so I'm talking about some principle and some instrumentation of that. So we basically we got two we got two scanning mode. One is con 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 contact mode of, of AFM scanning. Okay, basically we don't uh, oscillate this cantilever long cantilever. We just let it scan on the surface. We keep this angle the same. Okay, we keep the deflection of, of the, the, the cantilever the same. We, we are not uh, oscillating. We have a reflected signal here. And when we scan on the uh, uh, cluster or, or quantum dot here, or nanoparticle here, okay, we just lift it up by control of the piezo, and we can, the feedback loop will, okay, Track how the tip is moving, and track how and and, and calculate how the surface is corrugated. Okay, but you know the contact mode is directly let the tip contact to the surface, contact to the sample, and there's no vibration. So it's it's very hard pass on the sur surface, and and it is is up and down, but it's always contact the surface. So you can see there are more noise signal during the scanning. There are some distortion lateral force will coming out, so that will give you a lower resolution of the atomic force in vertical direction. And the other is, uh, because you are directly contacting, so you will easily, you have much more, much larger forces pressed on the surface, so you will easily damage the uh, damage surface in vertical direction. Especially you will, if there's a soft material, you can you will make a permanent damage on the material. And also, when I was graduate student uh, for my master's degree, one of my, my, my colleagues working on like a tubular structure, okay, basically he, he's used, of course, this contact mode scanning like nanotube, which is look, the structure looking like something like this, and lay, lay, on, the, lay on the substrate, and so when he used, tried to use scanning, uh, for, uh, contact mode to scanning, what will happen? Basically, he is pushing the, the, the tube and, and, and make it roll, roll on the surface. So here is the tube, tubular structure. So when he are, uh, scan, use contact mode to scan the surface, and basically he is pushing the, the, the tube, nanotube. So it's not really work for, for that physical absorbent material. You it will push that around. Usually like like kick, kicking the ball or kicking the uh, tube, uh, cylinder or something. So so there's a later on there's a mode called non-contact mode. Non-contact mode. Basically we are oscillating the surface. And we are oscillating really fast. We are oscillating really fast. So 
so during the scan, it's oscillating at, at a, a resonant frequency, and it's a slightly contact the surface, but it's not strongly contact the surface to try to see how the sur surface uh, corrugation. So you get, get better resolution and gentle uh, treatment on the surface, a gentle scanning mode. Okay, so so let's see. So so you can see that the cantilever in the tip is a, is basically the pro of the surface, and that is very important to get a resol uh, atomic resolution. So what what's the design of that? We can take a look. There is a L shaped cantilever. Okay, like like here. This is scanning electron microscopy, and here this is about the uh, few hundred micron view uh, uh, scanning view. Okay, so basically it's a long lever, and here's the tip. There's another V-shaped cantilever, and for uh, contact mode, basically we have something cantilever closer to this kind of shape. For the tip and mode, because you are, you need really strong oscillating, so you you used to have a uh, uh, L-shaped mode, L-shaped structures. So here are some uh, parameter of this. Uh, to how cantilever stiffness and resonant frequency. For contact mode, it should be stopped, so the spring constant is, is low, and it's not vibrating. But for non-contact mode, the spring constant needs to be large because you need to oscillate very, 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 very fast. So you should choose the right cantilever to to work on the right uh, the, the mode you want to, to use for, for scanning. Okay, so there are some tip shape the aptex we are using, this is a standard one, this is a pyramidal uh, shape we are scanning on the surface, and the diameter in the front is smaller than 10 nanometers. And here are some high aspect ratio, this is for if you have really deep structure, like a trench, or like a pit on the surface, you need to use high aspect ratio structure. And we, can, we also have some critical dimension structure, which could measure the side wall, and one uh, one tip we are one one kind of uh, tip I always use is a carbonate tip that we have really high aspect ratio and it's a cylinder to probe the the uh, for mines and nano pit structures. Okay, so there are some tip. In fact, you, you should you should know if you use the wrong tip, you should use a too flat tip or too blunt it, you may not really see the real structure on the surface. Okay, for here, here is a real structure on the surface. Um, there are many pits on the surface, but if you choose a really big tip, you get big probe to, to look at the surface. Then how you will see is a flat surface. But this is not true. This is the convolution between the tip and the sample. So you get all, all, all flat. If you get a flat tip, and you got a sharp sample, in the end you got a flat sample. Because you are, you are uh, imaging your tip, actually. This is the same, you got corrugation on the tip, and you got a sharp, sharp sample, but you got some corrugated uh, result. There are some uh, open uh, come out artifact, is the double tip effect. If in, in, instead of we have one tip, we have Double tip. Okay, once in the scanning early on, the, the first tip scan on the uh, substrate. So we we looking at okay, scanning on substrate, and later on the second tip scanning on the substrate. So instead of looking at the real structure, you look at a redundant, a uh, repeating structure on the surface. So this is basically uh, what you see. Okay, it repeating itself. So then you can easily, from the image, you see, okay, there are double tip effects. Okay, so the scanner, I think we, we will talk about more technical part. So I will, let's leave with the scanner, the design of that scanner in, into next lectures. And, but today's lecture, I, I hope I can show you some advantage. And you know, okay, which, in which condition we need to use AFN instead of, instead of uh, STM. The advantage of Tangent of using AFN is that it, you can use for both conducting material or non-conducting material. Even 
people use for soft material, even people use AFM for scanning cells. So that's very powerful tools. And it's insensitive to species. So, so it's almost true. AFM scanning the topography of the surface. It's not the electronic or the chemical uh, property of the surface. And you can draw, uh, you have a broad scanning condition. You can scan in atmosphere, vacuum, gases, and also scanning in liquid. So that's very powerful and it's easy, simple preparation. Okay, I hope you can take uh, all of this concept home and, and let's talk about that in the next slide.